Hey guys, Vorletzi here. Thanks for watching as always. We've finally reached the last round of this Intelcom 2019 tournament. Hopefully you've watched the whole thing. You've watched the intro video of Shez Vasti, looked at my list, the uh, overview of the tournament itself. Hopefully you've watched games one, two, and three and seen my decisive victories there, four and um, round four and my uh, decisive loss there or a narrow loss, however you want to look at it. But it's game five and Stakes are still high. The thing about this game is that if I emerge from this with a decisive crushing victory and if my opponent from the previous round uh, does not get a uh, you know decisive victory in terms of a, a major a major win, I will win the tournament hands down because I've collected so many objective points throughout. So that's going to be the goal is to come across this next opponent and hopefully do very well against him. And it's going to be Engineering Deck, which is one of my favorite missions in this game. So looking forward to that. But I find that going into this last round, even though we were at the top tables the previous round, I'm up against an opponent who is still undefeated. He's gone through rounds one, two, three, and four and for some reason is not playing against the guy that just beat me and I find that it's because he's been sneaking his way through with these minor victories. So this guy's just scraped a win, scraped a win, scraped a win, scraped a win, four games in a row and he's undefeated coming into the last round to play against myself with three major victories and one uh, loss which kind of makes sense when you look at it. So who are we up against? We are up against Invincible Army and this time I can remember his list and we'll have a look at it because it turned out to be an interesting one, uh, to say the least. So what have we got here? Invincible Army, and we've got a uh, limited insertion list, which is something I love to see with Invincible Army. But um, there are some interesting choices here, so let's have a look at it. Mo Wang Lieutenant with Spitfire Flam and Spear. Okay, I don't mind that profile. The only thing about that choice is that there's a perfectly good Red Fury there where the Red Fury has better range bands and it has shock. So you're depriving yourself of the Red Fury when you take the Spitfire and you're, you're spending an additional SWC to get it. So there is that. Yes, Flame and Spear probably better than Arcolite can own. Um, but he's taken it as a lieutenant rather than the NCO. I find the NCO better because you could have a safer lieutenant at the back, preferably a Dao Ying level 2, and spend his you know order as if you were the lieutenant to, to move out. But I, I believe he did choose the lieutenant option for this Mo Wang. The second one, and this is a real eyebrow raiser, the Hacktow Assault Hacker. Now, a lot of uh, good things have been said about the killer hacking device. I still don't like the killer hacking device in this guy, but the assault hacker, nobody sees this coming on the hack tower. So let's talk about it. Yes, he's very vulnerable to killer hackers, but he does have two wounds in BTS 6. I just fear for this guy because if you do you know, hold him in reserve to the end of the game, you may get no value out of him, but if you spring him too early and there's some guy like Kurnow on the other side of the board, Boop, pitcher goes across there, Maestro hits you, you're unconscious, red rum, you're removed from the table, and that's, you know, 70 points down the drain. Still, it is a hack tower. He still has a multi-rifle, Billis Skill 14, TO Camo, all of that cool stuff. So um, he's a, you know, very powerful piece on the board. And if you're not expecting, you know, Invincible Army to have a hidden deployment assault hacker, and a tag wanders past, then that could be uh, disastrous. So I'm sure this guy occasionally shines in the odd game because he's definitely, definitely, definitely not expected. Um, so the Zanshi link team, I'm liking that hacker there, but a couple of basic Zanshis, the Hideout MSV2, exactly the kind of setup I'd have with my Zanshis. But he has a Sonbei Yao Kong missile launcher in there, which of course he can add, add to with assisted fire. My only criticism of this is that if you use the Zanji in the link to add assisted fire to your Yao Kong, you kind of need to take him out of the link team first to do it, then reform the link team. Otherwise, you risk some sort of MSV2 sniper shooting at your Yao Kong um, as that order is being spent because assisted fire is a support where order that activates the entire link team if you're part of it. So just be careful with that one. 
But yeah, the Sonbei Yakong, um, remember it can't go prone. It's not really much better at AROing than, you know, some of your other things. And the Hydao is certainly do doing a decent job. We'll talk about that a little bit more during the game. Double Zensha Ford Observer, well, you can't go wrong with that limited insertion in this. You need some button presses, you need some presence in the midfield. And Doctor, you're going to have to have that to revive your Hacktail or your Mo Wang if they go down. Interestingly, though, the Mo Wang has two wounds plus NWI, so he's either going to be removed or not. And the Hack Tao is generally going to be staying out of trouble uh, before committing. Um, the High Dao has NWI, and then the Sonbei, the Doctor can't affect. So I might have actually um, gone through this incorrectly, and maybe he actually had an engineer, not a Doctor. If he did have a Doctor, I do feel like it's maybe not the best choice. So an interesting 10 order list. Let's jump into the game. So my opponent wins the roll for first turn, which again is annoying. I, I hate it when that happens, as you guys know. And he chooses second turn right off the bat, which I feel like is a solid smart choice and is the choice I would have gone with had I won that roll. Because if you can play a decent mid game, keep your army intact, you can have that final turn during which you pick up more consoles than your opponent and you swing the win back to you. Anyway. He's deploying first. Let's take a look at what positions he's chosen. So he's put the missile bot on the top of the roof. Move this over here. He's got the high tower around here. And he's got the Zanchis back behind the building. So I'm not too sure if you guys are aware of this or appreciate this. But one criticism I have of using a link team defensively and putting two pieces out defensively is that... If your opponent focuses on one of the two arrow pieces and just chooses their preferable, you know, which one's going to be easier to kill, as soon as they've removed it, the next one that you've exposed becomes even easier to kill and they pick you apart in that way. I prefer defensive link teams that only put up for play one arrow of the, you know, potential options. And if you, even if you've got a second model capable of arrowing, bring it out later or position it in such a way that it's only seeing a very small a vector, a, a small segment of the battlefield, rather than having both of them visible from the enemy deployment zone. That's something I don't really fully agree with. We have a Zanjar over here ready to press this button here, and a Zanjar right through here ready to walk, walk over and press that button there. And we've got a Hacktail um, kill, um, Assault Hacker hidden deployed there behind that. So that's what we're looking at for Invincible Army. Looking at this, um, this is extreme right hand flank. I believe that's the Doctor there or Engineer or whatever he's taken. And you've got the Zanchis at the back, Missile Bot at the top. Uh, another Zanchi there, or maybe that was the Doctor. So that's a look at his extreme right hand flank. Then um, that's the Zanchar that we just talked about earlier with the Hydao um, in the distance. And then over to Shazvasti. So luckily I've got a couple of really good spots for my um, Noctifers. The thing is, this game is going to be a bit of an all-in. I'm going for the big win, as you guys know. I don't want to leave this game empty hampered I'm, I'm going for it. I'm either going to take a loss here on the chin, or I'm going to win really big. And for that reason, I'm putting both Noctifers in full, full view, ready to uh, actually cover the enemy objectives. And I'm going to go straight for that Hydao first. The Hydao is the perfect counter to the Noctifers, but if Shishkin has anything to say about it, we'll drop the Hydao really early on, and then the Noctifers won't be able to be touched later on. So we've got the R drone at the back. Um, there's a Caliban right next to the objective to take it, shrouded in the midfield. There's uh, Shishkin um, up here with her friendly bot and a doctor nearby to help out. There's a Guaylo behind the wall um, towards the midfield there, so they're all sitting pretty ready to move into the cover of that central objective room. Left hand flank, you can see my HVT, and um, obviously there's Shishkin and the Link throughout the middle, so you guys can have a pretty good look at the battlefield, see what's going on there. It's going to be a pretty straightforward game. It's all or nothing, all or nothing time. My opponent puts down a reserve trooper, it's a Mo Wang, as we have talked about in the list. And there you can see the bot on the roof as well. My reserve trooper is um, the other Noctifer, I believe, you know, goes on the building, so. There was that. I actually um, made a hideous, hideous mistake, and please don't do this yourselves, guys. I forgot to deploy one of my Canop Calibans until partway through the first turn, and my opponent was nice and polite enough, and I have to thank him for this, uh, to allow me to just put the Caliban on one of the flanks in some inconspicuous location that wouldn't have affected the first turn. So that's exactly what I did, but my bad. 
Um, note that this is a mission that features Xenotech, so that's Xenotech represented by this pink uh, model here. Um, Candy Double attached to my doctor. He um, is using this little black model here, I believe, as the Xenotech attached to the Mo Wang. Okay, now, importantly, before the game started, I asked him, my opponent, how do you play buildings in terms of line of sight? Can you shoot from one side of the battlefield through the door, out the other door, to the other side of the battlefield? You guys might remember a couple weeks back, I played a game um, featuring OSS up against uh, Pan Oceania, where we were playing engineering deck, and uh, for that mission, I'd explained that I'd talked to my opponent at the start, would agreed, you can shoot into a building or from a building out to the exterior, but not from one side out the other. And for this particular game, though, that we're playing, my opponent uh, was more comfortable with playing that, that you could shoot directly through it, one side to the other. He didn't see any reason why we should play it any other way, and I um, agreed to him with that, and then the game has begun, and it's time for Shishkin to move in. And as you guys can see here, this is something that will actually help me, because Shishkin moves up to the building, and then pulls around the corner, and has a go at the high Dow. And as you can see here, we're shooting through the objective room, and one of the special rules for the scenario is that the objective room has a saturation zone. This is going to mean that um, Shishkin loses out on dice percentage for Fatality Level 2. It's less likely that she's going to crit. But importantly, it reduces the Hydao from 2 dice to 1 dice, meaning that it's going to be impossible for the Hydao to kill Shishkin with a single shot. So even if he crits and Shishkin fails, the armor save goes to unconscious, the Doctor can then come out of the deployment zone, revive her, and she can have another go at it. So that's a really crucial feature of this, this play. So Shishin comes in, 4 dice on 15s I think it is, Haidao 1 dice on 16, Shishkin wins the face-to-face -face roll, Haidao is destroyed because she just rips him with the, um, with the 4 dice and he like fails 2 wounds, and that's the um, Haidao gone. Now as we talked about earlier, you had a Haidao here exposed, uh, and you also have a missile bot exposed, so your opponent goes for one of those two models, removes it, and then when we come in to go after the missile bot, Shishkin's going from this point. Now I could have gone from this point here, where it would have been um, using the saturation zone again, but I was feeling a bit cocky at this point, I decided to just go for it, I wanted to shoot at this range, and I managed to find that this is inside of the, the bot's um, uh, good range band. I, think, I can't quite remember this point, but the bot is back down to Ballistic Skill 11 or 12 or whatever it is. She's can still on Ballistic Skill 15. It's 5 dice versus 2 dice. The bot could get unlucky, uh, could get lucky here, crit me, crit, Shishkin could be removed, that could cost me the game, but it doesn't happen. Shishkin rips the bot up and we're already um, down a, two, a couple of models there, so really looking good. Next up, um, we've got the Doctor moving out, um, Shishkin's moving back, um, just taking up positions. I know that I'm ahead in the game at this point, I'm just worried about a Lu Jing showing up, maybe blowing up the back lines. Noctifers are ready to go, they're not afraid of anything anymore now that the Hydao is dead. So, Doctor moving out, placing the multi-scanner with um, the, the Candy Double, the, the Xenotech. I'm placing this, this Caliban, of course, partway through the first turn. That's my fault. I did get that wrong. My opponent was gracious enough to allow me to put this, this Caliban uh, in a place where it wouldn't affect the first turn. I didn't spend any orders on it, but it's there. And then everybody retreats. Candy Double's placed her thing. We've also uh, taken the time while a Doctor was doing that Doctor's come out here, it's gone to touch the objective, it's come, it's come back, everybody's back into position, Shishkin's standing up. There are very few things on his side that could really threaten her at this point, because even if he moves his Mo Wang around to take on Shishkin, there are two Noctifers there, so he's got to get through that, and he's got no smoke grenades, so that's where we're at at this point. It's not going to stop him from trying though, Mo Wang moves around, decides to have a go at it. And um, Mo Wang, unfortunately, is going to have to contest with the Gu Guilo, first of all. We also have a, a Zencha uh, just uh, coming out of Marcus State to press the button on this objective and securing it. Then we have the other uh, Guilo, uh, so not Guilo, <laughs> other Zencha moving around here to go after this one. But um, I just go straight up with a Discover from my, um, my ARO, which was the Guilo going after him. So he does get revealed, luckily. Does go for the objective, but there's... There's a missile launcher and a link team with MSV2, so unfortunately for him, his Zenchar is blown up immediately. 
then he pulls around with the uh, with the with the Mo Wang, and again Mo Wang going against a Guaylo, and like I couldn't believe my my good fortune here that this was really the case, but Mo Wang going against a Guaylo heavy rocket launcher in a Harris. So there's a um, there's a little planter with you know forest terrain there, temporary jungle terrain, and uh, this means that the Mo Wang shooting three dice uh, with his Spitfire, which I think turned out to be long range up against the Guaylo, which is the perfect range band, ignores the forest deficit. So the, thing, the game was sort of getting out of control here. My, my opponent spring around the corner with the Mo Wang, taking hits from the, um, the Guaylo. Um, yeah, it wasn't good. So he's moved out of Xenotech. Mo Wang takes a wound, realizes that he's not really very well off, pulls, it, pulls back, and just leaves it, and we place the multi-scanner. So that's the multi-scanner being placed. He's on the board. But that's it. That's all that Invincible Army can do. So Shishkin, with a full 10 orders, springs back into action and rolls out here. And the plan is to go after the Zenchar and take back that objective and really make it hard for my opponent to win. So he's moving out here. Um, nothing's really showing up at this point. Um, so Shishkin able to just move a further forward, getting around here to go after the Zenchar. And this is the point where the hack tower reveals because we do have a hack tower with assault hacking device here who goes straight for this hackable bot and immobilizes it. Now, um, I do have a killer hacker in my list. No, I don't. That's in the other list, isn't it? I can't remember. But I think that after he hits this thing with an oblivion, it, it also busts its, um, its repeater. I can't quite remember, but I'm just thankful for the fact that Shishkin, even though she's two wounds now, is not hackable. Otherwise, the hack towel could have really had a lot to say about it. I love the term hack towel. It includes the hack part. Hack for hacking. The Squilo is now out of link team. He's by himself, but Shishkin is able to move up and start stabbing the Zenshar in close combat, removing him, eating up all those juicy orders, going up to four wounds um, very, very quickly. Um, unfortunately, my bot being isolated means I can't retake this objective, but we're able to move around with the Shishkin, start blapping that Hacktow in the face with that Red Fury, and coming down to close combat with him as well, killing him, eating him, and um, seeing him and saying goodbye to him. Okay, so that was that was brutal, that retaliatory turn, and my opponent, unfortunately, really not left with very much. He's got half a Link team and a Mo Wang. So um, he's deciding to have a go against the Noctifer. That doesn't end very well. He was trying to, trying to move out with a Doctor or something to go after some objectives, but the Noctifer missile launcher is going to have something to say about that, and um, that little um, silly excursion is shut down pretty quickly. Then he moves out with the Moang, it, again, just trying and trying to get something happening. He's got to take risks at this point. But fortunately for him, does get a bit lucky and does start um, getting some hits on the board. And I think he does remove the, uh, the Noctifer as far as I can remember. And that allows him to move a little bit closer. You can see that I've got my, um, my Shrouded inside the building at this point. He's moved his uh, Xenotech into the building now. He's placed his multi-scanner and then he can get his Moang into suppression fire behind these boxes. But um, thanks to me placing this Caliban early in the game, I've spent a couple of turns not even moving it. I feel like even though I forgot to deploy it until halfway through my first turn, I may as well move it out now. I mean, I would have had the Caliban somewhere, right? So he can start moving in this direction. And as soon as the uh, Mo Wang discovers, he's gonna break suppression fire. So eventually he does go for the discover and that breaks him out of suppression fire and allows me to just go in with Shishkin, light him up with a Red Fury and um, he is dead after that. Which allows me then to bring in the Caliban to go after some objectives. So this photo is taken from a weird angle on my side of the table. I've got this objective here. Um, it takes me a lot of attempts, but I eventually get this objective here. And the other Caliban is able to go in here and grab this objective. I, can ne I, I can't get this one here. And I didn't have enough orders to send my Shrouded into the room to grab this. But we do have a Guaylo in the room now from a, co a coordinated order. We've got the Shrouded in the room. Uh, Shishkin's up here standing up. It's basically um, basically lights out here for Invincible Army very quickly. Just because it turned to be a very decisive game in terms of the face-to-face the -face roll shootouts. But there's uh, not really much left. So, um, yeah, after collecting three consoles, I think it was... He tries to move around here against the Caliban. We've got um, a lot of AROs set up against this. Ends up just dying. He is in retreat, and that's basically the end of the game. More importantly, though, after securing that uh, brutal 10-to-1 victory over Invincible Army, 
we turn our attention over to the other game that's going on nearby. And this is uh, pictured in the top left, a uh, Chris Fiddick from Australia, and pictured in the middle in the beautiful um, pink and um, black and white striped shirt, Jed from New Zealand, who was the Toha player that I faced in round three and, 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 and beat. These guys are playing each other on engineering deck in the round five, uh, Tangaska versus Toha, to determine the tournament. So if Chris doesn't beat Jed with a um, massive decisive victory, I'll win because I just um, you know got a 10-1 over my last opponent. But as I walk over there and ask them how it's going, Jed turns to me and says, nope, I've lost all my best troopers and um, I've had some bad luck and I've made some mistakes and I'm about to get rolled. And that is indeed what happened. Um, our buddy Chris here manages to secure a very big win over Jed and wins the tournament by a single tournament point. Um, anything less and it would have been a win for me, but well deserved. He played great with his Tunguska all weekend and uh, unfortunately Jed was not able to put up a decent enough effort against myself or Chris, so um, drops down on the rankings a little bit. Great tournament, had a good time, came second with Shazvasti. Looking forward to the next one. Um, I think Shaz Vasti are an extremely powerful uh, sectorial at the moment. Fatality level 2 is overpowered. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. The lists that I've built for this event, you're welcome to borrow them, use them, give me feedback on them. There are other lists that you can run the Shaz Vasti, of course. But um, Shishkin is probably the most powerful thing about Shaz Vasti at the moment. Yeah, you can run the Sphinx. The Calibans are very, very good as well. So make use of them. And the Tiger creatures are, of course, very good. Um, but it's um, it's mostly Shishkin, but again, mostly how you play him, of course, isn't it? Uh, play well, succeed. Hope you guys enjoyed this uh, video series, the Bat Rep series. Uh, let me know if you want some more of this in future. I think the next tournament's coming up in July, so look around for that on my channel for more stuff. Uh, but in the meantime, it'll just be back to Bat Reps, back to video um, sectorial breakdowns and reviews. See you guys again soon.